Welcome to Faith and Family United Church of Christ Sunday morning Bible study. We are going, we're doing a series called Bible 101. Um, we are now starting into the New Testament. Last week we gave a, an overview of uh, New Testament, kind of an inter introduction. And today we're going to go ahead and we're going to talk about the Gospels. Okay. So, some interesting things about the Gospels. The Gospels is the starting of the New Testament, correct? Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Okay, so those are the first Bibles or first books of the New Testament. And you would think that since it's the story about Jesus, it would be written first, right? Well, that isn't true. <laughs> Not so much. What happened was um, at the beginning. Um, they, they formed churches out of their synagogues, the Jewish synagogue, formed churches that believed that Jesus was the Christ, the Messiah to the Jews. And uh, they started uh, just preaching this about Jesus. And we have letters from people like Paul and, and Peter and uh, uh, John who wrote to other churches to kind of give them some encouragement and tell them what's going on. So the letters came before the Gospels. And now, so you got all these letters floating around, and someone's going, well, wait a minute. <laughs> what are we talking about here? Because the synagogues, of course, they use the Old Testament. And so a lot of times in the New Testament and in the Gospels themselves, you'll see references to the Old Testament. And that's from that's from the people trying to explain you know how we got there so the uh, Matthew Mark Luke and John are the Gospels and they were written roughly at the end of the first beginning of the second century so between anywhere between 60 and 120 now, I say 120 because guess what we have documents that don't have the whole book of the Old Testament, but they're there in 125. So if you got paper that's got the gospel written on it uh, in 125, it had to be before that. So uh, let's go ahead and look at that. Okay, so here's the books of the New Testament. Like I said, the gospels are first, and that would make sense when we're, we're learning about it from the, from the beginning because we want to know about this Jesus character. And so we have four different perspectives. I'm going to call perspectives because I like that. Um, and each of these are written for a different purpose and to a different audience. Okay. So if we were, if we were writing to people in inner city versus people in the country, we wouldn't use the same language. We wouldn't use the same examples, or, and we would use different things. And that's kind of what we have in the co different Gospels. Okay, and of course the Gospels, and then we have a biographical, which is the Acts of the Apostles. We went over this last week. And that's kind of a, 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 an addition to the book of Luke, the Gospel of Luke. And so it tells about the beginning of the church. And then we have all the letters. And then finally, we have Revelation. And Revelation, uh, late uh, first century, uh, around 90, it was written. And it's a uh, vision of John of Patmos. He was in prison in Patmos and was given the Revelation. Okay, so there's that. The Synoptic Gospels and then the Gospel of John. Okay, the Synoptic Gospels, the reason why they call them the Synoptic Gospels is because everything seems to kind of match up. I mean, it's not, not in the same order, but it matches up. So a lot of times if you look at your Bibles, at least my Bible, you'll see little uh, uh, footnotes or little uh, notes underneath the text that says it's also found in Luke. If you're reading in Matthew, it's also found in Luke, or it's also found in Mark here. So um, the Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and um, the Gospel of John is more of a spiritual or a uh, uh, 
an ontology, if you will, trying to explain why Jesus is the Christ. And what, what John uses a lot of times is symbols or signs and, uh, or, or, or miracles. And uh, anyway, so those are the, the four Gospels. Um, here is a list of other Gospels that were written. You got the Gospel of Judas, the Gospel of Thomas, the infancy Gospel of Thomas. That's like one of the only places that you'll see someone write about Jesus as a child. Other than the, the one we get where he is goes into the temple and he's teaching in the temple. As a, as, what's that? At 12 years old. At 12 years old. Is that where they found out he had brothers and sisters? Is that where they discovered he had brothers and sisters? Well, they, they, there, there's nothing that says he has brothers and sisters other than what's in the New Testament. And then there's debates, you know. They're, they're stepbrothers and sisters. They're not real brothers and sisters and all this other stuff. It, it doesn't. We don't know. And as far as, as, far as uh, uh, the history of it and what the church says, the official Catholic church says that they're stepbrothers and sisters because you have to keep Mary pure. They didn't want to um, discredit his his um, divinity by saying he had brothers and sisters. Yeah. So they just kind of erased it all. So they kind of said, "Oh, well, that was these are these are brothers and sisters, step brothers and sisters from um, Joseph from a previous marriage before he married Mary." Or they say like Jesus considered everyone his brother. Yeah, I don't think that's. But anyway. The Gospel of Philip, Gospel of Mary, Gospel of the Ebonites, Gospel of the Hebrews, this Ebonites, and Marcion. Those are um, offshoots of Christianity. They believe in, in kind of some things different. Um, as a matter of fact, I, 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 I'm, I'm guessing here because I can't remember fully. But I think Marcion wanted to do away with the Old Testament altogether. So, but you got you've got the Gospel of Peter, the secret Gospel of Mark, uh, the, the the Gospel of Pseudo Matthew, the Gospel of the Nazarenes, Gospel of Perfection, Gospel of the Savior, Gospel of Nicodemus, Gospel of Matthias. Matthias will get to him in Acts. He's the the new uh, apostle. So you got all of these apostles supposedly writing their gospel but what we see and what the church has come to understand these are written much later and they're they're not truly linked to the people that said they read them or wrote them um, it's probably someone trying to make some money copy a little bit of the gospel say some other things kind of like they do today in uh, in uh, television Someone writes a really great script about a dragon and and knights, and next thing you know, you got 15 more stories or programs about a knight and fighting dragons or something. And it's kind of probably the kind of the same thing. So there are lots of different gospels out there. But they're not sanctioned by the church, and they're not they're not anywhere be able to be able to point to and say this is historic order. This is a, a good understanding of what we know about Christ. Okay. Um, as a matter of fact, the Gospel of Thomas, it's just a bunch of sayings. It's not even like it's a story. It's just a list of sayings that could have been used in Jesus' time. Now, I'm going to say this, and I don't want you to get confused, but there's, there's something called Q have no copies of it and Q they think was the first actual gospel and what Q was was someone just wrote down everything that they remembered about Jesus and they went around and they spread it to the other uh, uh, churches and so the people started using them and talking about them and they would remember the, 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 some of the things that they said and they would use it in their worship, and they would, and so 
those kind of things being that they were part of the church and the churches came before the gospels and had letters and so they kind of incorporated them the sayings into the gospels matthew mark luke and john so they got those incorporated and some of them they think were um, used as hymns um, and some of them were used as as statements of faith um, so we have we have all those but uh, I just wanted to show you that there's a lot more people that, that a lot more different gospels out there than what we have here as authentic and uh, things that we can count on okay so Matthew is since we'll start with Matthew since it's the first book in the New Testament uh, Matthew the date the earliest manuscript that we have is 125. So that's almost 100 years after Jesus lived. So, um, but that's the oldest copy we have. We still have to remember that it had to have been written before then. And how long was it in circulation before it was uh, written, uh, before this, you know, was excuse me so the author uh, once again it's anonymous later manuscripts put in the gospel according to or uh, kata in Greek kata Matthew uh, so we don't really know who wrote it um, they attribute it to Matthew because Matthew, in the story of Jesus and Matthew, Matthew was a tax collector, so he was an educated man, and he would have been able to write, read and write, and so they attribute it to him. Also, Matthew being a Jew, and we notice the audience, who it's geared to be read by, and the audience is mostly Jewish believers. Okay, that's why in the very beginning of Matthew, you have the very boring part. <laughs> and it turns everybody off. Because what does it say? What does it say at the beginning of Matthew? Record according to the genealogy of Jesus. Abraham was the father of Isaac. Isaac was the father of Jacob. Jacob was the father of Judah and his brothers. And it just goes on and on and on. And so it's like... We don't want to read that. But it's important to the Jewish people to show your lineage, your genealogy, back to, this goes back, all the way back to Abraham. And it goes through David. So we have David and Abraham. So, and that, that's important. So we can say Jesus was a true Jew. Now, the reason why this is important, remember, the Jews were exiled to Babylon and they came back and they came back and there was the Syrians that were there and they claimed to be Jews also but they didn't have any lineage to back and so when they came back they started doing everybody's lineage making sure that they were authentic Jews so that the priests could to, could work in the temples and, and do the priestly stuff. So that, that was important. So you can see as Matthew writes, you'll see a lot of Jewish um, uh, traditions and, and um, things like this, genealogies that are important to the Jewish. And what, they're, what, what Matthew is trying to show is that Jesus is the Messiah. Okay? So Matthew... Um, We have his early, um, his birth, of course, and the coming of the Magi, and him going away to Egypt, and then being called back from Egypt. And that, that, of course, is an Old Testament prophecy. I will call my son out of Egypt. So once again, looking at this. So Matthew is basically um, written to the Jewish believers the people in the synagogues, the people there in the synagogues are kind of split. Half of them believe in Jesus, half of them don't believe in Jesus. 
and now they're going to have this bot this book to show hey this is what happened with jesus and you can see he's truly the messiah okay so before this we had some letters but we didn't have the story of who jesus was so matthew uh the best date for matthew is probably between uh i want to say 70 because of the temple the collapse of the temple and we talk about uh the collapse of the temple that was during when the jews rose up and kind of fought against the romans their occupying uh, force and so and that's when the temple was destroyed and they point to they point to um descriptions of the temple being uh, an abomination and it says let the reader know um, different things like that that say that this has already happened when it was written so that would have to have been after 70 so between 70 and 125 give it give it a couple years to be passed around so between 70 and 120 uh, is when this was written any questions on Matthew? No. So the next one is Mark. Mark again is written around 70 because Mark 13 talks about the destruction of the temple. Okay. But some of them, some scholars believe that Mark was the first um, gospel written and that Luke and uh, Matthew and Luke kind of followed along with Mark and had taken some stuff from that that elusive Q document that's that's nowhere to be found uh, just probably the sayings and and one and I, i've even seen one scholar say that the gospel of thomas which that's all it is is a bunch of sayings is actually the Q document so we don't know all we know is what we have mark matthew and luke um, so Mark, they believe, is probably the first one. Some scholars say no, he was the last one. But we can, we can again, between 70 and 125 is when Mark was written. Now Mark is interesting because it's more of a Greek and Roman world. Um, and it, it's thought that it could have been a play, like a one-man play. And you would come out and you would just recite all of Mark. And it was like, like I said, like a one-man play. And that would be, that would be the audience would be the Greek and the Romans because that's what they like. They like plays and they like amphitheaters and all that kind of stuff. And so this person would come out and he would tell the story of Jesus and uh, the story about Jesus and try to convince them that he was this son of God, which to the Greeks, the Greeks um, and the Romans, the son of God was very, you know, just, just like being um, the God, you know, you have the Roman and the Greek mythology, how the gods had, had children and they brought them to, anyway, so um, Mark Mark uh, doesn't have a birth story, which is interesting. It doesn't go into any of the birth story. It starts out with uh, the beginning of the gospel about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Um, it is written in, the, in Isaiah the prophet. So once again, you got the prophets and you got Isaiah. Um, and then you have his first he's baptized uh, at the temple um, or baptized in the temptations is the very first kind of story Jesus comes to John is baptized and then he's led out into the wilderness to um, to be tempted by the devil and he foregoes all the temp temp temptations another interesting and this this is this is kind of a, a Greek and Roman kind of story okay so the very first story is Jesus' baptism, his temptations, and the 
temptations. If you follow the temptations, what lifts the man down? He fulfills them in his life. It says, you know, he was tempted by uh, taking him up onto a high temple and says, throw yourself down because God won't let you be. He says, do not tempt your God. Later on in the, in the, in the gospel, you'll see where he's tempted to show who he is to everyone and that, you know, put his trust in God and tempt God to save him. So you see those, that, that's, that's, a, that's a, like a foreshadowing. The, the first story about his temptations is a foreshadowing of the things he's going to go through later in his life. So that, that's interesting. Um, so uh, once again, the audience is, is the Greek and Roman, and it could have been a play. Luke, once again, the earliest manuscript. We got pieces and parts, not the whole book, but we have pieces and parts that they date to uh, 125. So again, it had to have been written before 125, and again, it's probably around 70 or, or right after 70 AD, right after the the uh, Re Greco Roman Greco. No, not the Roman Greco. Greco -Roman. The Jewish Roman War. First group Jewish Roman War. So, um, Luke has a has a uh, birth account of Jesus, and what's what's I always love it. I always love it. It's kind of like you know our our um, our Lord's Prayer. You know the Lord's Prayer comes from two different sections comes from Luke, it comes from Matthew. And then we put them together. And it sounds so much better. <laughs> because one of them leaves off a part and another one, there's a middle part missing. But if you put them together, wow, it sounds great. And so that's what we do. Um, why did I say that? Oh, this is the same with the with the, uh, the the birth of Jesus. So we get a little bit from Matthew and we get a little bit from Luke, most of it from Luke, and then we put them together and we know the whole story. Now, um, so the earliest manuscript is 25, 125, um, and then there's references to the temple being already destroyed, so it's after that, so between 74, 74 and 125 is when they, they, this was written. Um, the audience is, okay, uh, Luke is kind of a historical book. And he, and he approaches it like a story would. Um, he tries to put things in chronological order as best he can, and he tries to get eyewitnesses that uh, have testified to that. And he says this in his introduction. Um, so he, he approaches it kind of a historical, kind of a, so that you know what went on. And uh, so, yeah, so that's Luke. Um, Luke starts out with his, with his birth of Christ after his little introduction. Um, says he carefully investigated everything from the beginning. So he went around and he talked to everybody. And once again, Luke, um, you got you to gotta attach him to somebody that's famous. So, oh, he was Paul's right-hand man. He was Paul's physician because Paul in his letters talks about being sickly and so this is supposedly a physician. Physician would be a man of education who could write, and then, and yet he's attached to Paul. Who everybody knows Paul because he all wrote all these letters all over the place. Everybody's passing his letters around. Um, I didn't. I didn't mention that, but uh, Mark. Mark is supposed to be uh, a close disciple of. Of um, Peter. So once again, you got Peter who was there, saw everything, and then he teaches it to Mark, who writes it all down. And Matthew, of course, we attributed him to Matthew the tax collector. So all of them have to be somebody close to the apostles that wrote this stuff. And and like like we go back to the to the. Uh, all the other gospels that was written, you see the names, Mary, 
Barnabas, uh, uh, Bartholomew, all of them are, are people that were supposedly Jesus' uh, disciples. Um, any questions about Luke? Okay, Luke is also the one that, that is attributed to writing Acts of the Apostles. So it's kind of a two-book series. And we get to John. Now, John is a little bit earlier. John doesn't talk about the destruction. John is between 60 and 90, okay? um, which is earlier than anybody, any of the others. But then some people put it as late as late first century and just attribute it to uh, John's disciples. Um, we see this in the, the, the letters of John. 1st John, 2nd John, 3rd John they talk about a community that, and people go out from them and people that have, have gone astray and left from them and so you can see why John would want or that community would want to write a uh, story about Jesus now this is very different than any of the others there's a lot of spirituality in John's a lot of uh, talking about um, miracles. As a matter of fact, John uses seven miracles. Remember what I said last week about seven. Seven is completion. Seven days, that, that, and God finished on the seventh day, so it's complete. So uh, John has seven miracles, and the last miracle is the resurrection. Ah, so it's complete. So. And John, he says in the, in the book of John, or the Gospel of John, he says that he's writing this so that you will believe. So he shows you the miracles, he tells you about the miracles, and he writes everything about the spirituality of Jesus and those around him. And in the end, you're supposed to see the miracles and believe that Jesus is the Son of God. But we do know John lived a long time. Why do you know that? Because he wrote the Revelation when he was 90 years old. Did he write that? Or is it... But we, don't, we don't have any evidence John that he was crucified. Atlas, which is a different John. Yeah. Or was it you know, someone that was... Just like, just like the book of Isaiah. Remember Isaiah was written over 300 years. And I'm sure that Isaiah didn't live over 300 <laughs> years. Or else the Bible would have said that. So it was probably a group of, of prophets who was a disciple, the first disciples of, of Isaiah, and then they just kept their own little thing going on, kind of like a college. College was started by a man, he taught everybody, and then um, when he got old, other people started teaching, but teaching the same stuff and doing the same thing that, okay, that's the same with John and John's epistles, John's letters, and the, and the revelation of John. It doesn't necessarily have to be that John, or it could be one of his disciples that did all that. And just like the popes take a new name, people take the name of John. So, okay. so that's John. Um, audience is intended to show that Jesus was the Son of God, same as Mark. So that's the Gospels. The Gospels are the story of Jesus. Some of them have his birth. Some of them have just his, his works of his ministry. And some of them talk about the spiritual aspect of, of it as it is. The Gospels. One thing I want to say, okay. You'll hear people, atheists, people that don't attribute any worth to the Bible other than just being a book um, want to point out and they'll go right to the end and what was Jesus' last words? Father forgive them. It is done. Father forgive them. It is done. There's three different last sayings. If you, if you were there and you saw it, one of them but it's perspective. 
It's perspective. We could all, we, we could, every one of us could go and watch something and we'll say, oh yeah, and the last thing that happened was this. But right after that happened, I left. And you guys stuck around for a few more minutes. And something else happened. And so you say, the last thing happened is this. And then maybe I would thought that this is the most, or Cindy, let's just say Cindy, saw that the most important thing to say was, it is finished. But you guys didn't really catch that. And I'd already left. So we have three different endings to, to whatever we saw. And that's the same, it's perspective. It doesn't mean any one of us was wrong. It just means that that's our perspective. That's how we saw that event. And it doesn't make it right or wrong. But when you put them all together, then we have a, a better understanding. And that's something that people who are, are so turned off by this, and, and that's not the truth. They're not turned off by this. They're turned off by preachers that stand up and want to condemn people and they want to um, control power and control and they want to dominate people's lives so um, you just got to watch out for them and try to explain to those kind of people that you know the gospels there's four of them for a reason so we can get a better understanding of everything that was going on and it's not to say one's wrong and one's right it's just somebody saw it from a different angle. All right? Right. Good. Next week we'll talk about um, some of the letters. <laughs>